it's amazing I mean really how this quilt could turn out in all different scenarios hi friends Tracy here from the sewing channel this quilt is not going to require muslin like the last one block kaleidoscope quilt I heard you on that last kaleidoscope video and I came through with a full color pattern just for you so here's the best part about this pattern you are going to be able to make two one block kaleidoscope quilts out of one pattern and cutting it all out at the same time you'll see i am super excited about this one two quilts in one and they're both amazing oh yeah enough talking already let's get busy making a one block kaleidoscope quilt that's going to blow your mind let's talk about fabric you are going to need some type of ombre fabric for this quilt. That is the key to making it look just right. Now this one I picked up at Joanne Fabrics, no kidding, you know, it's awesome. And then there's this one, one also from Joanne Fabrics. Look at how awesome that ombre is. The one thing you need to remember when picking out your fabric though, and I go over this in the pattern too, you need to be able to repeat your block in the same ombre sequence on point that's how we're going to cut it which leads me into cutting on point for success start your fabric that way everything just lays extra good take your big square ruler and right along here there is a line that line is going to help me line up with one of the strips of the colors in my ombre fabric so you can see here I have that line and I'm just deciding where I would like that ombre to sit because you can actually change the whole look of this quilt just by taking and moving this so the blue and purple is now in the center this and way the different colors are sitting in different spots it's amazing I mean really how this quilt could turn out in all different scenarios this one I'm thinking I'm going to have that yellow lime green color coming down the center and so I'm going to line it up with that line on my ruler best that I can now friends in that full color pattern I give you the entire cutting layout you'll have no worries once you get to the cutting stage of this that's all there is to cutting that ombre square out, except that you need to make sure that they all look just like this. Then you'll need another identical in size square to the background as the one you just cut for your ombre. You're going to need a strip of the ombre fabric and it matters for placement. So when you cut it, make sure that they all, you know, are in the same way there. Then you'll need two squares of the background fabric. Measurements are in the pattern again. Turn your square on point and I wrote here top and bottom, just to keep things straight for this demonstration. This is the top right here. What I need to do is take this corner and just fold it up to here and finger crease right there and make a mark right there. This is still the top right here. So I'm gonna take this corner and lift it up to that corner and I'm simply finding the middle, that's all. Once you find the middle, mark it. So you have two marks right here that is the middle of these two sides. This is the top and this is the bottom. Now what you're going to do is go to the bottom area right here and you're going to put a quarter inch box. You're going to mark that, you're gonna use your ruler and just make a quarter inch box right there. On those side marks that you made, come in a quarter inch from the edge of your fabric and make a mark where that is. That tells me that that is the middle and that is a quarter inch from the edge of that fabric. And I'm gonna do the same over here. And those two lines should form a plus sign. Again, a full visual of this block and the markings on the pattern. Here you're looking at the top and here's that bottom where that little quarter inch square is. And then I'm going to come over here where that plus sign is, where it crisscrossed for the quarter inch in from the edge. And I'm going to line my ruler right along where the top edge of the quarter inch corner is right there. 
and then I'm just going to make a line from that point in to my intersection up top. Again, this is the top and this is the bottom. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to line up on that corner again. I'm going to come in and line my ruler right up where that intersection is. I'm not coming all the way to the edge of the fabric. I'm not lining it up on that. I'm lining it up from the intersection down. The reason for that, we have to account for seam allowances. So don't forget about your seam allowances. They are important. So you should have two lines right there. I forgot to tell you earlier, you do need not only the ombre strip, but you need a background strip. So sorry about that. <laughs> so this is the top and this is the bottom. And here's our two marks right here coming up from the bottom outward to the middle area. As a side note, you do not have to mark each block separately after you pair them up. You can stack multiples together with only one marking on the top just to help you out there if you feel comfortable. If not, you can pair up and do it by twos if you like and just mark each one, but it's totally up to you. The first thing I'm going to do is come over here and cut something that I did not make a mark on. <laughs> That's why you need to line these up. If you're going to stack them, line them up with whatever point you want up top. However you did your ombre, you need to take notice of that because your cuts are going to matter on the ombre part. So you want to make sure that it's on point this way with the rows of the color going horizontal. So I'm going to line them up one on top of each other and say I have a whole stack right here. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to come up here to the top point on the corner and I'm going to come right here where that corner box is, that quarter inch mark, straight down to the other corner. I'm going to line up corner to corner and then I'm going to slice that. So you have that. Now you're going to come over here and from that mark right down here that you lined it up with on that quarter inch box, you're going to line your ruler right there at the point and then you're going to line it right up here at the intersection and the line that you made. And then you're going to slice. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to slice down this line. Line it up on the mark that you made earlier. So this is what you should have so far. So lift up these two center ones just like so. Set them aside. Then you have this and you're going to pull the background in here. Pull the background in here. Then you're going to pull this background strip right there. And that is going to be one block. So if that's one of the quilt blocks, then this one over here needs to make up the other quilt. And there's that strip right there. I would try and keep the blocks you know, in separate piles so you don't get things mixed up because now it's just going to be putting a puzzle together. That's all. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this center strip. I'm going to turn it. Well, let me turn this so I'm looking at it <laughs> so I don't mess it up for you all. <laughs> I'm going to take the center strip and I'm going to attach it over here to one of the sides. Now you can pin, it's up to you. And you're going to sew that quarter inch all the way down. This is also where that starching really does help. I like to press my seams on the little strips inward as a side note, just because when you get the other one on, it makes like a little nice channel in there and it lays real nice. So it's up to you. Now remember, you're still on the bias, even though you 
you know, starched. Things could still go awry, so just take it easy at the iron. Now I'm gonna take and lift this one over to here. Now when you are lining this up, it's very important that you line up right with the tip of where you started sewing the other one. My tip is right here, okay? There's my tip, and I don't know if you can see through the shadow, but it starts right there. So if I come across here, that tip is right there. So I want to make sure that those line up because otherwise you're gonna end up all wonky and you're gonna have to cut off more than you really wanted to. So keep that in mind. So that's how I line it up. And I just eyeball it. I just make sure, okay, those tips are at the same level. So I should be good. And then sew that quarter inch down. And you can see there, flip it over and put that seam allowance toward the inside. I don't know, that's just how I do it. You don't have to do it like that. You know, you do whatever you want. Looks like I might have taken a little bit more than a quarter inch, you know, of seam allowance. So be mindful of that too, because that's how all the blocks get totally different, is if you do a quarter inch on one, a scant quarter inch on another, and then a larger quarter inch, you know, so just be consistent. And then come over here and just press this out. And then that's what that looks like. And you can see there the little channel. These two side pieces, what you're gonna do is flip this like so. And what I'm looking for here is a quarter inch hangover from that top tip. So it's that tip right there. I want that dog ear to hang over a quarter inch. You can even measure it if you want. I mean, it is measurable with a smaller ruler though. <laughs> if I were to measure, that is like just a little smidgen over a quarter inch. So I wanna back that you know, up a little bit or push this one up. There we go. So that ought to do it. So just a quarter inch sticking out, that's all you need. Line things up, pin, 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 pin. I mean, I know I get too excited though. That's why I don't pin. <laughs> That's no excuse, I know, but so pin if you can, if you're not too excited like me. You can just finger press this over. And when you do that, when you do end up pressing that, you can still see that that lined up pretty darn good. And there's just that quarter inch sticking up. And so while you're still at the sewing machine, just finger press that one. You'll iron that in a second when you get this one done. And you'll just do the same thing. Lift this up and over. And you're looking for that quarter inch sticking up again, that little dog ear. Another reason too why you wanna make sure you finger press that one over, that the side piece here, is because you're going to be sewing all the way down on this and you don't want things to get you know all crazy down here so push that one aside and then sew this one on now i'm not going to figure out seam allowance side like which side goes to which side for you so they're nesting so you're gonna have to figure that out on your own i do not put that in the pattern i i'm sorry because i don't know i think you do have to go one way and then the opposite way on your block so just do half one way and half the other way and you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever nesting them together if you do one one way and one the other so that's your first block let's get that second block for the second quilt sewn up now wherever you wanted to place because you do need identical strips of this right here they all need to be in the same sequence so when you go to lay it down, just make sure of where you want your color. Now I did go ahead and put, you know, the same sequence in my block. So it's up to you. You could do like down here, you could have put the yellow down here and it'll give it a totally different look. So that's why I say this is, this block is amazing. I don't know, maybe I should change the name to like the amazing kaleidoscope. I don't know. <laughs> so here I'm going to, you know, find that middle area, right? If I line this up, it's going to be right there with the other yellow. Flip that, sew a quarter inch all the way down. And 
then you're going to grab that other inner piece and connect it to the strip and you're going to do the same thing that you did on that last block. You can see the tip of the background fabric there. I'm going to line that other tip right up with that just so that we're, you know, flowing in the same direction. So here's this one. It's all sewn up in the center. Now we're going to take the side piece, flip it over, and hang off a quarter inch just like we did the other one. Remember to finger press that open while you're here at the sewing machine so that this part is laying flat for the next attachment. Take this, flip it, so that you have a quarter inch dog ear hanging off the top. Bring it over and give it a good hot press. And here is this block all sewn up and ready to be trimmed. It's the top of the block right I'm here. I'm gonna show you how I trim it so that they're all alike and you may have a different way. I don't know, it was, you know, it's tricky. It's tricky sometimes when you want these sorts of blocks to all line up within the quilt because you don't want it to be even, you know, a little bit off. You want it to be right. So I'm gonna take the line on my big ruler and I'm going to first lay it down on this center strip. What I'm looking for here is, you know, the best straight I can get down the center of that strip of fabric. So that looks good right Once there. Once you get, you know, your line in the center there, you're going to push it down this way, your ruler, so that you're exposing a little bit of this up top. Now remember, this is the top. So you've got that straight and you've pulled it down a little bit, you know, so this is when you square it off, this is going to be dead in the center. My next mark I want to look at is five and three quarter inches from this side and five and three quarter inches from this side. And what I want to do is line up that five and three quarter inch, which is right there. I want to line it up at the intersection of these two fabrics. So that one looks pretty good there. I'm gonna look over here. This one could come down a smidge just like that so that it's touching the five and three quarter mark. And I can see here that all this is, you know, pretty even. So this line right here, double check again, you know, mine might be just a little wonky there, but you know, it's what it is. So then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna slice these two sides only first. Then I'm going to flip it like so. Now I'm going to line this down here at 11 and a half. So I want that intersection right there to be 11 and a half. I gave you guys quite a bit of wiggle room within the pattern too at this point as you're trimming, just in case you did take a big seam allowance. Once you have the 11 and a half going over here all the way around, your one is down here at the bottom, you're coming out, you have 11 and a half inch square. Then you're going to trim. And there's your block for that one. So this one, I'm gonna turn it to me so that I can see it. So I'm looking straight at it. And then I'm going to line up my point in the center of this strip. And I'm looking at it all the way down and I'm gonna find the best, you know, happy medium point there. Even if it looks like it's a little off, put it right in the center. So once I have that, then I'm looking over here, remember? one to five and three quarter and i'm right there dead on and this one oh, this one is i need to come down a little bit more until i see five and three quarter here and five and three quarter here where it meets up i want those fabrics to meet up 
recheck my line. If it's a little off, it may need to be. I can shift it just a little bit. You know, we are gonna cut this off down there so it might not be too big of a deal. Once you have it, then you're gonna slice. Flip it. So that your one is now up here and you're going to measure 11 and a half down here. Now line up down here, 11 and a half, find your straight in the center and then slice. And there are your two blocks. Now take your two little squares and fold them wrong sides together and then go ahead and put a crease in your squares. As a side note, you can also use a stripe like I did on this one right here, which will give it a totally different look. But be mindful that you need to have your stripes dead on as you do that. So my best tip is to find a fabric to use here that can be camouflaged, like that's really super busy. I'm going to just take, open this up lay that corner right on that bottom corner area with that crease that you made going this way. So hopefully you can see that. Lay that down. Then once you have that, go ahead and pin that. And do the same over here. Go ahead and open that up. Line that up right along that corner like so then you're going to sew right on that line of the crease that you just made with your iron go ahead and finger crease that for now and then let's sew this one what I do is press this again down before you trim anything else Next, just lift this open like so. Line up your quarter inch mark right along that seam that you just sewed and then slice. And you're left with that. Come over here and do the same thing. Open it up. Now you're gonna come in just for GP because sometimes these get wonky and you're going to put your one up here, the go one this way and down that way. And you're gonna line it up at your 11 and a half down here. And see, you had a little bit there that you needed to slice off and that's important, just get it out of there. <laughs> and we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Line it up with our one going this way and look for your 11 and a half down here. I undoubtedly in my comments get asked too what this is. This is just a command hook, friends. Super easy to stick on with a clear command sticky and a hook. And here you can see there, we got some off of there. And that's all there is to it. And in the end, when you're done, you're going to have one quilt that looks like this and one quilt that looks like this, and you had absolutely zero waste. <laughs> I'm gonna share with you an absolutely fabulous way to save a lot of time and work smarter rather than working harder. And that is to print out the color values that you would like to see in your quilt. This one, I changed these to the center. Um, horizontally the green and the blue because I wanted to see you know how that looked in a quilt so all I did was take a picture and print it out on regular printer paper so you know what you need to mark find the center there so if this is the top I'm looking at it from my angle I'm gonna fold this down Found the center there, mark it, and then I'm gonna pretend like I have a little quarter inch square down there. <laughs> so I'm going to lay this 
right on top of there. You're going to first line up corner to corner, top to bottom, slice. And ultimately these do stay together because they're fabric, but these paper ones do not want to stay together. And then I come over here. Here's your little squares for the tip, for the, you know, the ends there. So then what I would do is paste these down or somehow get them to stick down and I would trim that off too. And then I'm going to take a picture, a snapshot, bring it onto my phone, get a get like a bunch of these on my phone and put it together to see what that looks like. Look at these results. I am absolutely wowed. Now I know that the printer paper one is a little bit more dull in color, but let's just take a look at the difference in the ombre effect when you change where the position of the color is. I'm in awe, friends. Are you? This is the block that we made in today's video. I took four blocks, pointed them toward each other, and this is what you get. When you add 36 of them together and make a whole quilt, absolutely stunning. Let's take that same block and point three outward and put one pointing inward. And look, totally different. Check out this stunner right here. I took four blocks and just pointed them all clockwise. Oh my word, amazing. For this next block, I put two blocks pointing in and two blocks pointing out. And again, a totally different quilt. This next one is my absolute favorite with all of the rainbow colors in it. I mean, what a stunning quilt this is. I, I, can you tell I'm excited? I bet, because I'm totally excited about this quilt pattern. This next one I took and stacked two blocks pointing outward on top of each other. And this is the look it gave me. Totally interesting and totally unique. I just can't get over this. Check this one out. This is super simple. You leave out that corner to corner cut and then you just use some striped fabric in a certain way, like we cut, how we cut the ombre, you would cut the stripes like that. And it gives this totally just cool look here. I mean, what do you guys think about this one with the stripes? How about this one right here? Now I use striped fabric. I didn't use a center strip, but I also did not use a square on the one corner. This block right here just proves that you don't have to do all those special cuts and add-ins to make a stunning quilt with this quilt pattern. I mean, just unbelievable, really. Look at your screen right now. I've handpicked a few special videos just for you if you enjoyed today's tutorial. Go ahead, click on one of them so we can keep learning together. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.